In a rare visit, President Biden traveled to Capitol Hill Friday to try and unite Democrats around his economic agenda. Progressives are at odds with moderate members of the party over a massive bill focused on expanding the nation's social safety net and fighting climate change. The stalemate is holding up a $1.2 trillion physical infrastructure bill with bipartisan support in the House. Meantime, the lapse in funding is already forcing thousands of American workers off the job. CBS News congressional correspondent Nicole Killian has the latest. <laughs> President Biden trekked to Capitol Hill late Friday to rally fellow Democrats around his signature priorities. It doesn't matter whether it's in six minutes, six days, or six weeks. We're going to get it done. The high stakes visit capped off a day yes? of discussions among Democrats. We're in the middle of mashed potatoes or sausage making. That's what legislation is. Dug in over differences. We need to be real. Are we going to deliver, deliver universal pre-K to this country or not? Are we going to expand health care to our seniors and include vision and dental or not? Progressives continue to push for a massive $3.5 trillion social spending package, but moderates want a number at least half the size. Do you acknowledge that you may have to concede on that and come down? Well, I think I've already said we have to get everybody on board. Without a resolution, a vote on a smaller bipartisan infrastructure bill has been put on hold at least twice. How disappointed are you? That that well, I, look, I'm a legislator. I understand this thing. We set certain timetables. Uh, we're trying to get this uh, moving. We're trying to get momentum. We, we understand where everybody's at. The impasse over infrastructure is already having an impact on the Department of Transportation, where 3,700 workers were temporarily furloughed. 4,000 lives and families, too, that might be furloughed because of us. I mean, come on. And Nicole Killian joins me now from Capitol Hill. Nicole, what impact is the president's meeting likely to have on infrastructure talks moving forward? Well, at this point, you know, the president is really giving Democrats the room and space they need to try to work this out. In essence, that was his message to House Democrats today, that they should, you know, continue to work out a compromise for however long it takes. You know, he told reporters afterwards whether it takes, you know, six minutes, six weeks, uh, you know, it, he, in the end, he believes that it will get done. How it gets done is a different question. And he did, according to some of our reporting, uh, tell. Uh, some members that, look, they may have to come down on the price tag that that $3.5 trillion social spending package isn't happening and they may have to compromise as far as that is concerned. As of yet, you know, progressives are still holding firm that they believe that that is, you know, where they feel the number should be, that they've already compromised to that level. So, uh, you know, they are, however, willing to give it time and space as well. So, you know, we'll kind of have to see how these discussions bear out. But as as far as infrastructure specifically, no vote has been scheduled as of yet, and right now we really haven't gotten a timetable on when that could happen. Again, most of that contingent on when things get resolved uh, with this broader social spending package. Yeah. At this point, is it possible that we'll see a Senate vote on the reconciliation bill before the House vote on the bipartisan infrastructure bill? Well, again, that's what progressives have argued for, but moderates, right. as you know, really pushed for this infrastructure vote to happen this week. I talked to one of them who told me that, look, he is disappointed, but, you know, he's trying to be patient and, you know, it's about trying to make sure that everybody, you know, understands where everyone is at. Um, but clearly, you know, there is concern and it's worth pointing out that because they didn't act on that infrastructure bill, some transportation funding has lapsed and there are a few thousand uh, transportation workers, federal workers who have been furloughed. So that is a consequence of their right. inaction. And so now they're having to come up with like a short term fix for that until, you know, eventually they bring this infrastructure bill up for a vote. And with all this infighting among Democrats, what's the mood among Republicans? Well, I think they're just kind of standing back at this point, right, you know, and wiping their hands clean of it. I mean, you know, obviously a lot of the attention has been on Democrats on the Hill today. They've been meeting constantly from early this morning. Uh, you know, Republicans at this point, I think, are just, at least on the infrastructure portion of it, just kind of waiting to see what happens, because don't forget this was a bipartisan and still is a bipartisan infrastructure bill, so we do expect some Republicans to support 
reported, it will probably still be a small number. But, you know, with the changes the Democrats make as far as this whole process is concerned, unclear yet if that could turn some Republicans off. Um, so that is something to watch going forward. And I think, you know, if anything, Republicans also kind of view this as a self-inflicted wound for Democrats. You know, I mean, this is kind of their mess. <laughs> They've got to lie in it. They've got to fix it. Um, so like I said, it's kind of more of a hands-off approach from, from Republicans at this point. Just standing back and letting them duke it out. Well, Nicole, if House progressives can't come up with a compromise that they're willing to live with with those more moderate Democrats, and this ultimately becomes a real problem, how might that affect their relationship with the rest of their Democratic colleagues? Do you expect that it might create a rift on potentially future legislation? Well, I think we're already seeing that rift, and it's, it's pretty self-evident. I mean, we've kind of seen it throughout the process. You know, there are clearly, especially I think on the progressive side, um, those who feel that they were left out of the negotiations to begin with, you know, starting from the beginning with that initial bipartisan infrastructure bill. And so, you know, some progressives have been very vocal about that. And I think in their view, they feel that it is important that they continue to have a seat at the table and make sure that that all of these policies uh, ultimately get done. I think what a lot of moderates are saying, you know, folks like Joe Manchin, uh, you know, they support the president's vision overall. They just think the scope of it should be scaled down. So I think in the end, in terms of how this gets resolved, it's just a matter of whether both sides can really agree on what those core priorities should be with respect to this broader social spending package in terms of how much money gets allocated for child care and early childhood education and for climate and, you know, paid family leave. It, you know, progressives have always argued, what are you going to cut out of that? But, you know, folks like Senator Manchin have said there are some things you can cut out of that. So, again, that's kind of the dialogue and the discussion that's going on right now. But, again, unclear how long they're they're willing to give this uh, before moving forward. And, again, yeah, the president not know. really putting that timetable on lawmakers. And, and, Nicole, as you say, that that rift is there already. Who... Who is getting more of the blame among the rest of the caucus? Is it the more progressive Democrats or is it the more moderate ones like, like the Senator Sinema and Manchin? Well, I think there's definitely a lot of frustration, certainly with Senator Manchin and Cinema from progressives in the sense, I mean, just this week we found out that Senator Manchin was pushing for the price tag to be $1.5 trillion and had pushed this kind of came to an agreement with uh, leader Schumer over the summer. And that's something that really, to a certain extent, kind of blindsided some members, not even, you know, some senators, but also, you know, on the progressive side uh, for months now. They've been wondering, well, what exactly does Senator Manchin want? What does Senator Sinema want? And they haven't necessarily necessarily uh, telegraph that, uh, particularly Senator Cinema. So I think, you know, that's where some of the frustration lies. And, and like I said, I think it's a matter of, you know, some of these progressives feeling left out of the process early on, but, you know, making sure that they stay vocal on this. And, and clearly, as we saw this week, you know, they have built up a certain level of sway and influence to the point that they were able to stop this infrastructure vote in its tracks, which is something moderates had put for, which is something Senator Manchin, Senator Sinema had helped negotiate. You had this whole group of moderates in the House that had articulated and pressed for a vote this week, and ultimately mm. it got shut down not once but twice because of this uh, group of progressives. Both sides really dug in, but in this case, they're both Democrats. All right, Nicole, thank you. <laughs> you bet.